hello, 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 hello. Hello. Oh, that that Better? definitely makes a difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep, 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 Albert was, when he was happy, he's like, we just need to order you another one. I'm like, yes. Yes, <laughs> Let's we do. do. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. All right. Okay. I did want to talk about our new merch. Mm. <laughs> In honor. Of the farty dog. Of our farty dogs. Farty dogs. You guys have to listen to us enough talking no. about. <laughs> the rubber taste in my mouth. Yes. When a dog farts. Carlene is basically a dog fart sommelier. <laughs> She'll be like, that tastes like rubber. <laughs> like burning rubber. The paint's coming off the walls. My eyelashes are sticking. <laughs> we can do a whole series with each different dog. My eyelashes are sticking. That's hilarious. I'm yeah. going to turn this down just a tiny bit. We can, okay, we can totally spilled. do a whole okay, series. Okay, that's better. That was, look at that, mm-hmm. from there yeah, to there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, our yeah. merch. Our merch. So, we have an aluminum um, the water, water bottle. bottle. Which is cool. Yeah, so it's a, it's basically Apollo against a white background. You can see a little fart. <laughs> fart cloud. And then there's like a little quote from Carlene. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what did it say? I think I tasted that one. I tasted that. <laughs> Which is what you'll hear me say every time one of them farts. <laughs> oh, I tasted it. Uh, every time mm-hmm. she tastes them. She tastes them. Well, usually it happens during my segment and I'm talking and I just like end up eating the fart. She'll be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot louder and a way more dramatic yeah, than super that. Super dramatic. Oh. And then we did the coffee mug, which I love. Oh yeah, the coffee mug and then there's a tank top. That was a tank top. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> super cute. Anyway, I think you guys should uh go look at it. Head over to our merch store. And um it supports us so that we can Start doing fun things and buy good equipment. Yes. These two women that I was listening to, they actually rent space, studio space. Really? Every time they do their podcast. I'm like, mm mm, we don't need to do that. And you can't tell the difference between us and them. I don't know why they do that. Really? But and some people put the foam up on their walls right. and insulate it, but. Yeah, right now the. <laughs> Air conditioner just kicked on, I mean, so that's probably why they do stuff like that. Yeah. So it, no interference. Yeah. But they don't have to hear the dogs barking in the background. There's no dogs oh, farting. Sure. But yeah, even if we want to do that, we could do it at my house and mm-hmm. not have all that interference. All right. So that was that. We just we wanted to mention that it's it's on the Teespring website. I'll put it up on our. Why well, I already did put it up. On Facebook yeah. and on Instagram and on Twitter, but I'll do it again I think after I the show. Share it. Uh, I think we're gonna need some ice before we get started. Yeah. Anyways, if you want to look it up, it's uh, I think it's under Tipsy Tales Podcast Merch and then Dog Fart Hell. Get out! <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. That's a- oh, you know, it'd be really cool. We need to find Candle Maker. Oh yeah. We should do. Hey, if any of our listeners is a candle maker you know a lot of people do it on the side right what if we collaborated small business small business oh that would be interesting help each other out yeah yeah hit us up yeah and then we could get the labels made to say like you know how that one calm the fuck down we can have our own little you know i always say delicious (laughs) (laughs) fucking delicious Ah, tastes like tastes like a rubber <laughs> tastes like a rubber tire rubber ti- tastes like a burnt tire <laughs> <laughs> smells like a burnt tire i don't think anybody will buy that one yeah i'm i was thinking about the fact that i had you hot boxed in here on the last episode <laughs> and i had just changed their dog food <laughs> because i had what do you call it? I ordered a service for them to deliver the dog food, mm. but their dog food finished before the service started. And I was like, I'm not going to buy a whole big old the- giant bag. And so the place I usually get this dog for food from, which is a stock shop, had already closed. So I had to get it from the grocery store. And their tummies were like, fuck that. Uh, yeah, they were. We're going to fart. All of them. All of them. Even Shorty. Remember her <laughs> old lady farts? Yep. yep. That's hilarious. 
Yes. Anyways. Anyways. Girl. Yes, we're talking about your farting. Poor girl. Poor girl. Oh, you're talking about your farting. I went to use your bathroom, and the dogs have definitely been drinking the water. (laughs) 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 I got up, and I was like, oh, you had a wet bottom. I'm wet. Uh, I never use that bathroom, except to wipe it down. That's funny. funny. So I came out and told them, you guys are drinking the water. You get all sort of treats when you come over here. (laughs) Good thing I love dogs, and I don't care about a wet butt. (laughs) Now, if it was pee, you get the royal treatment. Oh, <laughs> my babies! My babies. I got Connor a bidet for his birthday. I'm so happy! Once a bidet, you don't go bidet. <laughs> <laughs> I so. thought about getting me one too, but I I didn't get me one yet. He hasn't been able to use it yet, but he's pretty excited. Let me just tell you, when Albert first put those in our toilets, I laughed about it. And I was like, oh, my God, we don't need that. And I was super doubtful about it. Mm -hmm. But now when we go places like stay in a hotel or whatever, I miss my bidet. (laughs) (laughs) My butt really misses it. (laughs) I I mean, all the reviews were like hilarious to read. (laughs) But they're like, your butthole will never feel cleaner. Nope. Hold on, I lost my thought because there was something else. And I'll tell you, during the whole pandemic last year, in the height of all the whole (gasps) toilet paper thing. Yeah, you didn't have to worry. Yeah. You know that barge? Oh, yeah. Supposedly, there's going to be another small issue. But get this. I went to Costco day before yesterday, and I went to get my normal water for mostly, well, for myself, but also when I have company. And uh, no water at Costco. Really? No water bottles, nothing. And uh, so I asked the people, like, what's going on? And they're like, well, it's summer. Um, I've lived here my whole life, and you guys have never ran out of water before. Right. So that doesn't fly. Any other thing? Like, did you guys not put it all out? No, no, no. Well, when I first got there, I saw people leaving with, you know, those flat carts. Right piled up oh yeah to the top so i was like what is happening well i guess there's gonna be a bottled water shortage you know what i drank out of the hose when i was younger i'm just like i'm gonna deal with it what are they afraid of like we have a brita thing too really but i just mainly get it we have a water filter so i never i hardly ever drink bottled water anymore i mean the water comes out of your faucet is supposed to be healthy right anyway but I just like the taste of it. And I, and not the fancy stuff. Right. I just like the taste of like fries water. Mm-hmm. I like that. So I just bought some jugs. I can't. Because I, I always drink out of this. It works for me. I became a water snob at some point And I just can't drink it out of the, straight out of the faucet. I can't drink it out of the tap. Unless I absolutely have to. But it's not my favorite. You know what water, bottled water, arrowhead all that is is tap water and it is not filtered if they filter it then they need a new filter system because you can even see the float like if you get your tap water and you hold it up you can see the floaties in it Mm -hmm. if you get arrowhead water and hold it up it tastes just like tap water Mm -hmm. not not like if you use a brita or your fridge that has the filter Mm -hmm. and if you hold it up just straight from your faucet it has all the floaties in it I don't need fancy smart water that costs a lot of money. I just don't want floaties in my water. Yeah. Who's the smart people here? The people that are selling you the water or the people that are buying the water? Yeah. That cracks me up that people pay so much for that. (laughs) And and they've even done taste tests like to see if people, because they're like, oh no, I know the difference. Right. And they've tried and they faked people out. Same with wine. Fancy wines. Right. And they've gotten just... A good, you know, ten dollar bottle of wine versus a hundred dollars. Did you know that there is water sommeliers? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd be good at it. What's his name? Zach. Oh God, I can't even think of his name right now. Efron. Yeah. Did you watch that special on Netflix? <laughs> yes. I forgot the name. I haven't of. finished it, but yeah, I did. Wa- I started watch- watching. You know what? France? You know when we forget the name of something, I just thought of that. Bianca was telling me, she was like, I'm listening to you. She goes, and I'm shouting in the background the name, the name of the thing that you're forgetting the name of. And That's so hilarious. I wonder how many people do that when we're, when we're I'm like, oh, I just can't remember the name. And they're like, it's this. 
Yeah. Um, France, they have it right. Like, nobody has denied water in France. All the homeless people, right? they they will have water. They have filtered water that comes to yeah. the fountain, drinking fountains, uh-huh. in the parks, everywhere. It's all clean. It's like they have one of the best water systems around. They know what they're doing. Yeah. That was a pretty cool episode, just like mm-hmm. watching that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it, too. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it, too. You liked it a lot? I liked it a lot. All right. Well, I guess we should just get to it because I know you got places to be. I got places and to go. We, we're drinking. Um, I'm having wh- whiskey and Pepsi and she's having her whiskey and Sprite tonight. Mm. So I'm already starting to feel a little special. <laughs> I feel nice and warm. Uh, I'm, I'm warm. warm. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, no, don't worry. It's just who I am. Okay. It's All right. fire in me. So did you watch Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries? Did you b- binge on that whole? I, don't, I haven't binged on the whole thing yet. Oh. So but the first I've seen season. of it. The first season I completely binged. Because like, that is your thing. I, well, because I, I'm a glutton. <laughs> like, I start watching something it and I can't me. stop watching oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, there this was this the new, the updated, Unsolved yeah, the updated Mysteries, one right? that that Not started. The with... There's two seasons now. It does. Ha- oh wait a minute! I think I did bench it all because it had the one that was like in Asia or something. Or where's that one in in France? Oh yeah, it's in France. Uh huh. And where then... the dad takes out his whole family. Yeah. Yeah. I did watch the whole first season. You're right. I haven't watched I the whole second it, season, but... and I don't I... think I have. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched. I haven't watched any of season two. I don't think. Yeah, I haven't. I I need, I'm afraid to start watching it. I need. <laughs> I need to set aside some time because I know once yeah. I start watching it, I'm not gonna stop yeah. watching it. <laughs> yeah, and some of them I just I won't remember because I didn't get as much, as into. There were two episodes that I just wasn't really into. So, anyways, my story is gonna be on um, the mysterious death of Alonzo Brooks. So he was highlighted. And that's season one, episode three, and it's called No Right Home. Okay. So, I and you'll pro- it'll probably start I'll sounding remember. familiar when, mm-hmm. um, when I start, start reading, reading it. it. It was about 23-year-old Alonzo Brooks of Gardner, Kansas, who in April of 2004 went to a party in another town called, now they say Lacine, so I'm going to say Lacine, mm-hmm. but it's L-A, La, and then C Y G N E. So I'm going to guess that that's French. Okay. So he goes to this party with some friends. They all pretty much left him there and he never came home. Oh, I do remember that. Do you remember it? You know why? Hold on, pause. Why I remember this, and this is for anybody that wants to watch something, but if you can support these people, it's a good foundation to support too. These two guys. They're diverse, and they dedicate their time to go around and um, people that have gone missing. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Oh, God, I think I I've seen it on Facebook. I haven't. Yeah, they go and they try and find missing loved ones in bodies of water. And then they also, for the environment, you know, when there's like 15 cars in a lake, they have those taken out. They've found weapons. They've found, you know, they just clean up the environment too. But they have located a lot of missing persons. And um, like one was a 17-year-old boy that his girlfriend broke up with him and his mom's car was missing and her rifle. And the police were just like, did you see that? that? Yeah. Oh my God. I was bawling. I was crying so hard I couldn't even handle it. And the sheriff was was a jerk. Yeah, is that the sheriff one? Sheriff was a complete jerk and they just weren't doing it and her, the mom knew her baby was in that lake and he they came and found him on the first dive. Adventures with purpose. Yes, adventures with purpose. You can YouTube them. But first of all, that's what I binge. Right. I can watch hour before I know it it's midnight. Yeah. They can use support because they don't charge the families anything, and they just do it. I'm getting all goosebumps on don- right now. Yeah, they yeah do that was such a good episode. That one. Yeah, but anyway, okay. But they've done some pretty um, big cases that have been open for years, and then they end up finding the, the body. People. Yeah, yeah. 
It's sad, but it's good also. Anyway, so this one's a cold case. That's, that's what that reminds me of because they did a case that I thought it was this one, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. It was similar to this one. There was a dive team involved mm-hmm. with this. The, I mean, the deepest part, I'll get into it, but yeah, like yeah, literally yeah, the creek at its deepest point during that time was like three feet. Mm, yeah. So there was an announcement made the other day um, that made me want to look into this story. Oh. So there's been some developments. Nice. And I'm sure there'll be more. More. I'm, I just have a feeling like some more stuff is going to come out before the end of this year. Anyways, so I'll kind of break down the episode since it does give the gist of what happened to Lonzo, um, who was known as Zoe, to his family and friends. So Lonzo and his family are originally from Topeka, Kansas, and Wait a minute. they is moved. That where this- Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay. And they moved to Gardner um, four years prior to the incident. Okay. I think I think they may have done this episode. Okay. So go ahead. Maybe that's why. Okay. So Sorry. and then um, he's mixed. Mm-hmm. His mom is uh, Mexican heritage and his dad is black. Mm-hmm. So and the only reason I'm even saying that is because it does come into play. Mm-hmm. The episode pretty much starts out with his mom, Maria Ramirez, talking about and describing Alonzo, who by all counts seems like a, he's a really good young man that loved his family. Um, he loves his mom. Listening to her talk about him is heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. He was her baby, and she still wears a red flannel that belongs to him Aww. because it makes her feel close to him. Mm. So it, that part was really hard to watch. Yeah. A lot of it was really hard to watch, especially as a mother. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sure, like, you're going to get angry in the same parts right, that right. I did. Um, so apparently, and I'm going to fill in the blanks on what wasn't really recapped on the show, because they did leave some stuff, key mm-hmm. stuff out. Like the fact that him and his friends had been day drinking on a Saturday afternoon. Afternoon, mm-hmm. They didn't really bring up the fact that they were all kicking back drinking since noon. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is a big factor, because they were already drinking before they headed down there. So then they hear about this party from a mutual friend about this party that's in this town of Lacine mm-hmm. or Lacine. It's about 45 minutes to an hour by car. Okay, there are three friends that are interviewed on the episode that also went to Lacine, but he got a ride with Justin Sprague or Sprague. The other two were in separate vehicles. So it's like a caravan. They're all following each other down there. Daniel and Tyler were the other two friends. Um, I'm going to guess that there were more people in the group because Daniel definitely mentions a female that was basically his ride. And then there was a mysterious other person that I read somewhere had also been Alonzo, at Alonzo's house drinking that afternoon as well as or drinking at his house that afternoon as well. But he doesn't really get mentioned on the show except by Justin and his name is Adam. It's like very vague around this guy, but I mean, he he plays a key role and there might be a reason he didn't want to get um, on the show. Yeah. On the show. Yeah. But even like in a lot of the information that's out there. Yeah. He's people even doubt that he even really exists. What? But I think he does. Now I'm intrigued. So they get to the party in Lysine and according to a Justin, uh, Alonzo uses beer as an icebreaker and yells, who wants a beer as soon as they get out of the car? Uh, and he starts passing out beer and introducing in himself, how basically. Do you, how do you spell Lacine again? It's two words, L-A, uh-huh. and then C-Y-G-N-E. Okay, so they get to the party in Lacine, and according oh, to Justin, go ahead. Alonzo uses beer as an... Okay, I already read that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'll look it up later. Okay. Did I mention the party is in a rented farmhouse right smack in the middle of nowhere? No. And when I say farmhouse, it's exactly what you might imagine a farmhouse (laughs) in the middle of some podunk Kansas town (laughs) surrounded by fields. There's a creek that meanders through the property. There's a straight road just off the main farm road that leads to it. That is so bizarre. Yeah. And I guess... According to some people on the internet, this is like a, it's known as a party house. Oh, that particular farmhouse. House. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And I'll probably um, post like a picture, like there's like a aerial view of oh. the farmhouse. Okay. So the people. Wait, at the wait, wait. Do people live in it now? I don't know if they live in it now. Sorry. That just popped in my head. I don't know. So the people at the party are not their normal crowd. 
there being the group of friends that went down there uh-huh. because they're basically from the suburbs in Gardner and they s- describe most of those um, there to be a tight knit group of what they describe as cowboys. Uh-huh. I mean, you kind of figure that part out. Right. I don't know why, but the town in Footloose comes to mind. <laughs> oh my God. I, that's what I was... <laughs> I was actually visualizing the whole the whole setup, like mm-hmm. when he dances through that whole thing. Oh, that's hilarious. We have the same visual. That's funny. So the friends describe themselves as the I don't see color garden variety kind of people. But apparently the people in this town do see color. And the N word definitely was heard in relation to Alonzo that night. I mean, oh, I can't just go. Before what? I say something. Okay. <laughs> and there was an altercation that Daniel witnessed and apparently broke up uh, where Alonzo and one of the other party goers was, they were squared up to each other and um, race was apparently a factor. Mm-mm. If not the reason it was a factor because the N word was thrown around. Thrown around. And, and what's really weird to me now going back after I read a bunch of the reddits and the people like commenting it on all the online stuff Mm -hmm. going back and watching it because i watched it and i was like oh you know (laughs) but going back and watching it and them talking about well he was having a good time there didn't seem like anything was wrong you left him in a place where there were racists right right that you know that there was an altercation even if he like kind of went on with the night like Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. So that I definitely ha- okay. have a feeling about that. that happen- That's why I think I'm getting it with another similar incident mm-hmm. that happened in a in that same kind of area that these guys adventures with purpose. It may have not been that case, but it could have been because it was the same thing. He went with a group of people. They left him and he was on his own in a very prejudiced house. Huh. And then uh, and then across the way was a drug house. Oh, see, no, that yeah. that wasn't this. Yeah. This was like yeah. literally it was the only yeah. place within this area right here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, race was a factor. Apparently, he was one of only three black people that night at the party. And basically the way, because there's a bunch of stuff online too, it sounds like at one point there's like about 200 people there, like towards the end of the night. When they got there, I guess the party was just barely getting started. So there wasn't as many people there, but somebody online talked about the fact that there was another party that got broken up and all those people, and this was after all the friends had left, but that doesn't really get mentioned in the Netflix episode. I mean, they only have so much time, but right. also they can only show so much, I'm right. sure. Right. Or they only want well, to Well, they're going show off so these people's point of view right. that already left, so. <clears throat> True. So when they get there, it sounds like the party was just getting started. The person Justin came with got wind of another party. Not Justin. This was the other guy. Daniel. So the person Daniel came with um, got wind of another party. And I'm going to guess closer to home. So after about an hour to an hour and a half, he said his goodbyes and left. So when he left, he said everything looked good. He's the one that actually breaks up the fight Mm. or the almost fight, the altercation. And then he said everything was good after that. And Alonzo was having a good time. Um, And then the other friend, Tyler, left as well, not long after he arrived. So it sounds like about 45 minutes. He was there about took them 45 minutes to get to the party. Right. And then... <laughs> they stay for 45 but minutes. But I remember that. Do you remember yeah. that? Like yeah. being at a party and like you're not feeling it. So Right. You just stay for a little while and then you're like, mm, boring. Right. No. And you could say you were there. And then they left... That left Justin. So Justin's the one that he got a ride with to the party. And keep this in mind. Justin claims that he was not witness. He didn't know that there was an altercation mm. earlier in the night. So... He didn't know there was already bad blood happening, but it sounds like he kind of knew that there was some kind of some racial undertones going Mm -hmm. on. So I don't know. At some point he runs out of cigarettes. He goes, you know what? No, I, 
Okay, just, I'm not going to say it again. Just go. I'm not confusing this story. It's the same story? It, there, I definitely saw this, and and this is why I, 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 I knew the story, but I didn't realize I saw it on Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. So, yeah, he runs out of cigarettes. He goes to see if he can um, get some off of Alonzo. Alonzo said he's running out. So then Justin's like, I'm going to head out mm-hmm. and get some cigarettes. I'll be back. I'll be in back. Al- yeah. And but- Alonzo says, get me some. While you're out there. Right, right. So he thinks his friend's coming back. Justin has the intentions of coming back. At least that's what he says. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Never leave your buddy behind. No. This is like a nightmare of mine as a parent. (laughs) I would always tell Allie with her friends, I'm like, stay in teams. Like, you... If there's two of you and one has to go to the bathroom, you both go to the and bathroom. And watch your friends' drinks when their yes. backs are turned. I totally Obviously, it's different for girls, like yeah. the, a little bit. I would always say you cover, your, keep your hand or a napkin over your drink and never, because they'd go to those frat parties and I'm like, never let the f- boys get your drink. You yeah. always get your own it's drink. It's a scary world out there. It is. It is. So anyways, yeah. I mean, what was the first thing you did when your kids came? He's 23 at this point, but they never stopped being your babies. And he was he was he was her baby out of five kids Mm. and he was living at home. You know what I mean? So imagine like I just think of any time even when they first started going out and they're at that age already where you can't really stop them. All you can do is just pray. And you don't sleep. <laughs> like you think offer them you advice a, and pray. Right. When you have a newborn, no. it's hard to sleep. Yeah. And you're worried? No. The worrying doesn't start yeah, until that, they get older. <laughs> and then you don't have any control. Right. You're just like, I just have to pray. Right. I just have to You don't have any control. A, you don't. You At don't least have when any they're control. babies and they're kids, you have control. But once they're in college or old you know, 18 and it's like and all you can do is like you give them advice mm-hmm. and you teach them and then you hope they take that advice out into the world uh-huh. but you can't control completely what their actions and reactions are going to be and you cannot control the other people the x no. factors that are out there i mean i remember i did some things i didn't have much guidance and thank god spirit but i still got myself into some things that i'm pretty lucky that nothing horrible happened. I'm going to say same. <laughs> pretty lucky. Because there were times it got real pretty hairy. Could have been really dangerous. Yeah. I have some pretty hairy memories. And with people that I thought I could trust. Like one was with one of my sister's friends. Right. Like I went, I was drunk and we were walking back to my house, but my house was far. So we stopped at this person's house and he was older. And I thought it was my sister's boyfriend's best friend. And I'm like, oh, we could trust him. He won't let anything happen to us. And he was the threat, him and his roommate. That's scary. Yeah. Who would have thought? You never know. You never know where the threat's coming from. Okay, so there's a lot of online chatter about Justin, and some of it I think is deserved, and some of it, according to him, in an article in the Daily Mail... Um, which was one of my sources, he felt that Unsolved Mysteries left out a lot of his side of the story, which he felt portrayed him in a bad light and made it seem like he changed his story. So I'm going to fill in the blanks here according to the article. So Justin leaves to get cigarettes, takes a right instead of a left, ends up on a dirt road. This is according to what they portrayed on Netflix. (laughs) Uh, Ends up about 40 minutes north of where he's supposed to be. And that's what's on the show. He calls his friend Adam, who is also still at the party, and tells him he isn't going to make it back and asks if he can make sure to give Alonzo a ride home. So this is that Adam character, the mysterious Adam, right. who eventually is the one that leaves him there. Mm. At But he's not the one that got him there. So mm-hmm. at the time of the phone call, everything sounds good. He can hear Alonzo in the background talking shit. Mm. <laughs> So in the mail article, and even his, uh, Alonzo's mother mentions that she feels like Justin's story has changed too many times. Mm. And Alonzo's best friend from Topeka also counters as well, saying that he never said anything about being lost, but that his car had broke down on the side of the road. Justin says both are true. He got that it was always part of the story. He did get lost and his car broke down. As well. Justin has been the target of death threats since they ran the episode, so I'm definitely trying to give both sides of the story here. Mm. 
interesting. So he- here's a quote from the Daily Mar- Mail article. It says, his car breaking down has always been part of it as well for- as him getting lost. It's what he told the cops and the FBI repeatedly down through the years. It's on the original police report. The version on Netflix is very misleading and he gets why people think it doesn't make much sense. So he said his- part of his story got cut out. Okay. Um, the truth is, Justin wasn't even alone in his car that night when he left, and his story is backed up by the surveillance cameras and phone records. I'm already feeling it right now. <laughs> All right. According to the source, Sprague did leave the party to go to get its cigarettes, but he did so with another friend. He was 18 years old, drunk and high. They got lost plowed their car into a ditch and abandoned all plans of returning that night. Sprague had just enlisted and feared a DUI might end his army career before it began. Yeah. Also on the DailyMail.com has been told, okay, DailyMail.com has been told that telephone records support Sprague's claim that he called Adam. So this is what makes me think that he does exist. Part of me thinks that Adam is put. My daughter's so cute. <laughs> she's still texting you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Adam exists, but he was more Justin's friend than, Al- friend than Alonzo's friend. So he probably didn't have that uh, loyalty to Alonzo to get him home. Oh, uh, right. You know what I mean? That yeah. same. He, that, the concern, the make sure he gets home. Right. Yeah. If I don't see him, then if he's not ready, then I'm just going to go. Right. I could see him doing or, that. And, yeah. And according to Justin... They both missed each other. Like he, mm-hmm. he couldn't find him, so he just left. He's yeah, like, "All right, yeah, right, right, All right." He's, oh, I'm well, not waiting around. When if I guess he got his home. Real friend, he'd be like, "I gotta find. I can't leave him here." Right, right. And while the internet rumors questioning the existence of his friend are abound, he was one of the friends who hung out at Brooks' house earlier that day. This Adam guy. That's according to some of the websites that I went to. Um, the source claimed that three surveillance cameras at the gas stations confirmed Sprague's account of his journey, as well as the fact that he withdrew $200 from an ATM when he and the friend that was with him decided to go to a strip club from which they were both ejected. Oh, my god! So that's gosh. that's a real story about what happened that night after he left. So, right. And they're 17. Yeah. <laughs> that totally makes sense to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they um, probably didn't want, want huh. people to know that right off the bat. Right. So the next morning, and he probably wasn't so worth with forthcoming with mm-hmm. Alonzo's best friend. Mm-hmm. So the next morning, Alonzo's mom, Maria, gets a phone call from another one of his friends asking if Alonzo's there. And she just assumes that he is. She goes over to his room. His bed was never slept in. Mm. She says that that was definitely out of character because no matter what, Alonzo always came home. And if he didn't come home, he called her. I remember that part of her like no that doesn't make any sense. always comes home he wasn't the type to sleep over at other people's houses was pretty mm-hmm. much what she said yeah so she tells his friend to start asking around and then the phone tree of friends all get on the phone call one another and nobody knows where Alonzo is is this the one where the dad went out and like some family finally came and they all went out looking? The brother. And I think that the dad, I think the dad too. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I don't mean to jump ahead. But I'm I think it was recounting. mainly um, the older brother. Okay. So she calls his best friend in Topeka, Rodney English. So before they come to Gardner, he pretty much grew up in Topeka. Hmm. So he had this best friend that was like his brother. So she says, you know, has Zoe contacted you? And he's like, no. And she tells him what's up. And he drives from Topeka Mm. to Gardner, meets up with his Gardner friends who he'd never met. Mm. And they all drive down to Lacing to look for him to the farmhouse. And as soon as they get there, they notice, okay, so there's two different stories here. Mm. The story from Rodney is that there's, that he finds a shoe here, like on one side of the road, and there's another shoe like up the road a little bit. And then he had a beanie that he wore all the time. Um, and that was thrown in a field. So mm-hmm. not too far from each other. And then the other story is that the friends told is that both of his shoes were together, that they were neatly together and they were facing the creek like on the other side of the road. Swim. Yeah. On the yeah. So kind of weird. But that the beanie mm-hmm. was exactly where his friend said, so everybody's uh-huh. going to, everybody remembers things differently, I guess. So I don't also, know. Also, the, the longer it goes, the more stories you start to hear. Right. right. You know, like. And things get vague. 
and things get like cloudy. Right. And as rumors go like, oh, I saw him. I saw him with this guy and he was doing, the, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. So like on Reddit, there was a lot of that. Like, there's people that are anonymously, anonymously um, writing in saying like, I'm from Lacine. I was at the party mm-hmm. and this is what happened mm-hmm. or not necessarily at the party, but everybody, everybody in the town. I have a friend who said this. I yeah. heard that. Yeah. Everybody knows what really happened that night. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's hard to, there's probably some truth in there, mm-hmm. but it's hard to tell. Right. Okay. So basically while they're up there, he ends up grilling them and um, dresses them down as to like the etiquette of you left your friend mm-hmm. you know what i mean like what kind of friends are you i mean Leave that's me. what i would have been i would yeah. have been like why Who leaves your friend yeah so and Even then you get a pack of cigarettes yeah you go together or you just don't get cigarettes it's it would have been like hey we're out of smoke so let's go get some let's leave this what it does sound like thing. is that he met a girl mm. and so then there's probably that oh, i don't want to interrupt him while he's trying to mm. get his groove on whatever I don't know. I don't know at what point in the night he meets this girl. Oh. Um, and Justin didn't mention it. Oh. Okay. Alonzo's mother, Alonzo's mother, Maria, also goes off on them at some point, And she's understandably very upset with them, oh. even to this day. You can see that she has not let go of any of the anger she feels towards any of them for leaving him behind. I mean, naturally, when somebody dies... You want to blame somebody. Right. So she has that. But on top of it, she has all of that. When she didn't really have Mm -hmm. like the closure she needed. Right. Well, it's all open. Right. (laughs) Apparently some guy rolls up on a four wheeler and tells them they need to leave. Whoa. Yeah. All right. So this is like the next morning. So I guess the night they went down there was the third. That was a Saturday night. It was already pretty late. Yeah. Um, so this carries probably carries into the fourth early Sunday morning, which mm-hmm. and then so that's when they're down there. They're on the fourth. This isn't a graduation party, right? It was no, I think it was it's just um, a party. from what I read. No, it was a party they threw for somebody that was going into the navy. All right, okay. All right, so the mom ends up calling the sheriff because she's just like, all right, that I've heard enough, and the sheriff basically tells her that he'll probably show up. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you don't understand. I know my son. He always calls. Anyways, by the end of Sunday night, she calls her oldest son, Billy Brooks, and he and his wife take a trip down to Lacine. They contact the owner of the farmhouse, find out that the farmhouse had been a rental. Like, I never want to die or get lost in a really small cowpoke town. Right. These sheriffs. Well, one, they don't have the resources. Right. Right. But two, a lot. They of seem them a little are... dismissive. Like yes. that one you were just talking about, yeah. where the guy was just—he was just a dick. Yes. For no mm-hmm. reason at all. Like he was he like, we already, we already searched for him. We yeah. already checked the yeah. lake. He's not there. And then they find him. <laughs> they fi- first dive. <sighs> yeah. This all right. Sick. So, anyways, the house had been to rental, been a rental, and then um, I read somewhere else that it was like four guys that were renting mm. the house. Um, they took. A look around the farmhouse, which is suspicious. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Suspiciously, very empty, and for just having had a party there the day before, it was. It really was clean. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> it was clean. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. Especially with four guys. Yeah. You know yeah. they just like roll around in their own shit. Which so. makes me think, like, and I'm mm-hmm. speculating here. Mm-hmm. Some shit went down. The people that had rented it knew some shit went down mm-hmm. and they cleaned up quick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They mm-hmm. probably like got rid of whoever was left there and they cleaned up. It's like the murder in the kitchen and then all the, you go in and it smells heavy bleach. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it smell like bleach? So they go to well, what I believe is a... Hold on. Sh- disclaimer. Okay. My house always smells like bleach when I do my floors. <laughs> I can't use I did bleach not kill anymore. Anybody. It's like bad for me. Oh, really? Yeah, like every time I use it now, like I, I start feeling like almost like that drowning feeling. Like, oh, close you, closes your lungs up. Yeah, and I never used to be like that. That's weird. It mm. happened last year after the dogs and I was oh. using bleach all the time. Oh, you probably did inflame your... Yeah. Yeah. And I was probably... Oops, that sounded really loud. <laughs> I was probably using it with things I probably shouldn't have been using it with. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they go to a 
what I believe is the sheriff to report him missing. You know, they figured they'd seen enough and they try to give him, give them that 48 hour crap. Like, wait till he's been missing 48 hours. And they're like, uh, and then the sheriff tells them he's probably out walking around. Hurdy, her, her, your kids, blah, blah, blah. He'll show up. And the sister-in-law asks, how many people do you know out walking around without their shoes on? That a dipshit. Yeah. Also, I didn't mention that he had an ankle injury and he would lace up his shoes a certain way, probably to stabilize it. Oh, and apparently they had some rain in the ground and the ground was super muddy. Oh. So the walking around without your shoes on kind of falls apart. Right. And also, I personally checked out the Farmer's Almanac online and put in the date. Look at you. I did. And investigator. the date of the party and the mm-hmm. high that day was 63 and the low was 39. Yikes. And the party didn't end until the wee hours of the morning. So, you know, it was on the colder end. <laughs> When wow. probably all that went down. Uh, note to everybody, when you listen to Tipsy Tales, you are getting a thorough investigation. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So I'm going to guess that the last thing he was doing was walking around with no shoes on. Right. And also without his beanie. Oh. Um, so that was a pretty stupid statement on the part it of the sheriff. Sounds like somebody kicked his ass. And he... Yeah. Oops. Did something a little too much. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I think happened. Mm-hmm. So according to the Lynn County Sheriff, Paul Phila, he checked, I, I think that's how you <laughs> say that, he checked out the house and walked the creek bed, I think that day, and they found nothing, so he turned it over to the KBI, or Kansas Bureau of Investigation, and they brought in the evidence and recovery team, and apparently at some point, cadaver dogs mm-hmm. didn't find anything. Kansas Highway Patrol supplied a helicopter to search the area and by April 10th. So we're already like from mm. the 3rd to the 10th. The FBI joined in on the search. April 12th, a rescue dive team searched the creek, which they said was about three feet deep at its deepest. And they found nothing. Which uh, for most of these small towns, the dive teams um, are fire department. And it's just volunteers usually. Yep. So it's not like these guys, this adventure people. Who are doing who, it on their own dime and their own time. And they're very qualified. And they have resources that these other people don't. But they also, like one of the guys, he um, he's like a ship's captain or something. Mm-hmm. For like a fishing boat or I don't know. But these guys are like really qualified. And they, they can do dives in places that these volunteer divers can't right. or don't know how or it's too dangerous and so yeah like that's why they do pretty basic dives and most of the time they don't find well anything. i don't even, it doesn't even sound like they had a dive no it sounds I like mean, they had a walk through yeah. a creek yeah <laughs> the family offers to help and they're basically sidelined and told to stay out of the way wow okay which i think this family handled it admirably because fuck you Yep. If you, you're going to tell me <laughs> that I can't. Oh, I'd be, you know me. Help I'd search like, for my child mm, or say, my brother or my sister oh, or anybody. No. I am going to do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> they did stay out of the way. But the one thing they did do was call every day. Oh, good. And um, they're basically how... told, stop calling every fucking day. Well, um, the Kelsey case, mm-hmm. that's, I mean... That mom called the detectives every single day. Well, they weren't being updated on a Uh regular basis. And when they called, they were made to feel like they were a nuisance. I'm sorry. If you don't call every day, they will put you at the bottom. Right. You have to be the squeaky wheel. You have to. You have to be your own advocate Mm -hmm. in everything in this world. And that's your child. Least of which Um, these kind of circumstances, especially some of the stuff like you're talking about when we were talking about that, the dive team thing yeah. like that. Sheriff was so dismissive. He was mm-hmm. such a dick. Yeah, I, I'm was. sorry. It was hateful. OK, so the FBI said is said to have interviewed more than 125 party goers okay. that month, including the friends that um, he was there with. Finally, on May 1st, almost a month later, the Brooks family was notified that they could come in and search the property because they were done with their investigation. Literally, I kid you not, within 90 minutes. So on the 
show they said 30 minutes, but more consistently, it sounds like it was within 90 minutes uh-huh. of them searching. They found his body <gasps> that He's day. Been found? Yeah. What? That day that the family finally went. It's It was a month. No. It was 27 That's days. Ca- cadaver dogs, supposedly. Helicopters, supposedly. KBI, supposedly. FBI. Uh, Okay, they should feel stupid. No, no, well, I don't know, (laughs) because let's keep listening. So anyways, he was found on the banks of Middle Creek, which was adjacent to the farmhouse property. Billy Brooks, the brother, describes his body as looking like he was just asleep and that he still had his color to him. Okay, hold on. He... He w- he had been held somewhere and just killed then. Yeah, and you know what? They don't really give a like a projected time of death at all. But just listen to this. Mm-hmm. It's looking like he was just asleep, other than some skin missing on his neck. So there was like so yeah, there was skin missing on his neck. Composing stuff. Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's never really a clear picture of what that was about. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is where the medical examiner, which says some pretty stupid things like it would be inconvenient for someone to go through all the trouble to place the body, the body where it was found. No shit. But that doesn't. If he's in water or like the elements water, he would have been bloated, bloated. Right. um, And just laying there for a month, he would have had uh, the elements would have done stuff to. Yeah. And his skin wouldn't have had that tone. He would have had more, a more gray, gray tone. Yeah, you would think the sun would have damaged it clearly. Right. Yeah. Uh. <sighs> so, anyways, yeah, the medical examiner says that, and it was really annoying. Was... That's annoying. Uh, no shit, but <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't stop people from doing inconvenient things when right. they're right. motivated not to go to jail. Right. Even the authorities on the show pretty much were adamant that this his body was not there when they because this put, makes it look like they got egg on their face. Right, was not there when they. Hello. 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 Should I should I put on our little <laughs> thing? I don't know. What do you think? ASMR. There was a whole ASMR. Yeah. Podcast on this. that did this I actually know. YouTube. Yes, and it was so annoying. I had to stop listening <laughs> after about 15 minutes. I that, couldn't take it. That would be annoying. It was. Because there's no way I want to listen to somebody whisper a whole true crime podcast. story. No. Is that a thing? Is that like a like, I don't why know. Is that you a and thing? I have only joked about it. All right. I mean, what would we do? And then, hold on. And go did we ever say i'm alma we did not wow well, i guess we could say it now <laughs> i'm alma i'm carlene i'm i'm carlene <laughs> we're, so, we're so glad you've joined us we're not very consistent are we <laughs> like well, i watch some of these podcasts and youtubes and they're like very formulaic they do the same thing and say the same thing at the beginning and Sometimes we're like, oh, did we say that? <laughs> but then there's the fun ones. Yeah. And they're just as fun as we are. And that's okay. That's true. All righty. So even when the authorities on the show were pretty adamant that his body was not there when they searched, leading you to believe that once the Brooks family got the okay to search, somebody was either tipped up, tipped off, <laughs> or in earshot and made sure to place his body there. Either way, it's suspicious. Yeah, like that, one. What was it? One of the hundred and fifty people that were interviewed. <laughs> was it somebody that was involved in the investigation? <gasps> what if, like you know, everybody is related to everybody in those towns? Right. Like maybe the sheriff's son was at that party, and he was like, "Hey, this is what they're gonna do." There was speculation that there is a judge, mm-hmm. and that judge's son mm-hmm. was one of the people involved but speculation nonetheless Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. on these sites it's not anything that's been verified so i'm not gonna what the medical examiner did find on his post-mortem examination indicated that brooks did not have any broken bones any signs of blunt force trauma or injury 
nor any of the biological signs of drowning in his lungs. So he hadn't been it's, underwater. No, and he would have been bloated. Yeah. Well, life, well... Consequently, the pathologist could not determine a cause of death. So what? he stopped short of saying he was the victim of a murder. Oh, fuck. He also mentions the fact that the soft tissues of his neck were gone, which he said was probably animals. That went really fast. Life will stood. Huh. Doesn't usually go that fast. We just put the ghost app on. Okay, ghost so one of the theories floating out there, and also one of the accusations that have been anonymous. Anon- Another bit of amazy? <sighs> I'm back at back. We say we're not going to start drinking before the podcast, and then sometimes we just well, do. Whiskey, whiskey brings on a whole another side of us. Yeah. <laughs> so filling in the blanks on what happened after his friends left, and also speculation and anonymous tips, which have not been corroborated. So at this point, until the FBI says it's verifiable fact, this is all just speculation. He hooked up with a girl at the party, mm-hmm. a white girl, mm-hmm. and some people. Had a problem with this. That's what I was thinking. That he hooked up with white girl or like started talking to a white girl and somebody got pissed. Right. Her brother got mad. Right. Which <laughs> feels very Emmett Till. Yeah, well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And some people had a problem with this and a fight happened. Also, according to the article in the Daily Mail, investigators from the Lynn County Sheriff's Department, the KBI, and ultimately the FBI, <laughs> who interviewed, what says doubt. Mm-hmm. Okay who interviewed more than 125 partygoers, had a working theory of what happened that night and believed that the secret to Brooke's fate did not lie in Lacine. Dailymail.com has been told that the authorities were given the names of two young men who were overheard talking about Brooks and planning to hurt him and fuck him up. (gasps) Fuck up a N-word that night. Oh my God. On some... Of these online forums like Reddit and Twitter and other places, some people say that pretty much nothing is a secret in such a small town and that most people that were involved know what happened. Oh, yeah. Some point to a well-known family in town, not super wealthy, who also, it's speculated, are related to the girl. Huh. Um, so they're not super wealthy, but in a small town, you don't have to be super wealthy to have influence, especially if you're known as the town bullies. Oh. Like I said, that is all speculation. And since... There really isn't verifiable proof. I'm not putting names out there, even though names were mentioned Ooh, all over. Dun, dun, dun. After watching the Netflix Elisa Lamb documentary, how people went after the guy that got doxxed by the Internet sleuth. I don't really want to be part of that kind right, of stuff. Right. Um, if you really want to know, you can t- just type in Alonzo Brooks and Reddit. And you can pretty much go through the whole, you'll go down the rabbit hole. There's several, (laughs) there's several reddits out there. Um, Anyways, one last thing about the episode before I move on was that the family basically received a letter. letter, Oh my God. Basically received a letter. It's so good. It's such a good letter. (laughs) It was so hurtful. It was so mean. Yeah, it was. Actually, the family basically received a letter saying that they were closing the case because there was nothing to prove foul play, which is total BS. See? Anyways. See? 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 All right. Anyways, that was 2004. Mm -hmm. The Unsolved Mysteries episode aired July 1st of 2020. They received a ton of tips right away on their hotline, which they passed on. But I guess the FBI, because like that whole year previously when they were investigating Mm -hmm. for the Unsolved Mysteries thingy, Mm -hmm. the FBI decided to open up the case again. So probably because of right. the Unsolved Mysteries right, thing, right, the FBI right. was like, all right, we're opening this. Yeah, we should probably do that. And they offered a $100,000 <gasps> reward for anyone with, an, with information. 
They nice. received permission from the family to exhume his body oh. on July 21st of last year. So his body was transported to Dover Air Force Base for examination by the Armed Forces Medical oh. Examiner after it was exhumed. And this is like this originally happened 17 years ago mm. in 2004. And I'm That's thinking. That's insane. What are they going to find? Well, after? things have like progressed oh, I scientifically. Guess, yeah. I so guess. face. Which makes me think like the whole John Bonet thing. If they like. Yes. If they would just. Yeah. Mm. Does All anything right. have to do with the face? Face. Um, See? There was the soft face. tissues on his face. Yeah. Well, that's. Well, on his neck, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Anyways, but they haven't released anything about this autopsy that they did. Okay. Okay. So I mentioned new information that just came in, out this week, actually, at the beginning mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the fifth. The FBI's friend. Oh, okay. That's so creepy. Uh, I'm, I just got chills right uh, now. Says yes, friend. My head just got really thick. Did it? Yeah, it was weird. I see. Okay, the FBI's Kansas City field office said in a news release on Monday that a new autopsy of Mr. Brooks' body revealed that his cause of death was homicide. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the family knew it all along. Yeah, they did. I think it's common sense. Well, I mean, well. <laughs> We knew that Alonzo Brooks died under very suspicious circumstances. Dustin Slinker, the acting United States attorney for the District of Kansas, said in the FBI news release, This new examination by a team of the world's best forensic pathologists and experts establishes it was no accident. Mm -hmm. Alonzo Brooks was killed. We are going to do everything we can and will spare no resources to bring those responsible to justice. So... Anyone with information is encouraged to call the FBI at 816-512-8200 or 816-474-TIPS, T-I-P-S. And I am getting chills. Chills. Or you can submit a tip online at fbi.tips.gov. And that is my story. Look, can you see? Isn't that crazy? It's crazy talk. wonder why. Yeah. So what, do you have a theory? Mm, uh, no, actually. I, I do think that possibly like the brother or a, an old boyfriend or somebody who liked the girl has something to do with it. Right. There's so much more that l- really made sense that was out there, but I just don't feel right like putting it out, putting it out there because I mean, if you really want to know, you can go on to Reddit. It's about to go Uh-oh. off again. I mean, it did say friend house now it's saying house hmm. so it's something about the face who knows come on give us a name yes say a name say a name say a name <laughs> <laughs> well that was my story that was good you know what the crazy thing is oh. i didn't know if i was gonna have enough to fill up <laughs> that was a lot that was a lot that i was a lot i was the same way though i didn't think i was gonna have a and then I was reading it over because I was like, oh, my God, I didn't read it to make sure it sounds OK. Right. I was like, oh, geez, this is a lot to me. It seems like a lot. <laughs> <gasps> shameful house. Shameful. Hmm. OK. Along with these weird goosebumps, I'm thinking. That's weird. Can we get an EVP on here? Talk into our mics. We did get one on the last episode. Did we? Yeah, I just didn't really say anything because I was like, I know it was late. It was late by the time I finished. I know, but I left it in there. I did. Did I left it in there. All right, I'll have to re-listen. If anybody hears anything, let us know. We should make contests. Yeah, if you guys hear hear the EVP, then you can. The first person to put it on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or you can yes, email us. EVP. We'll get a shirt. Okay. The first person. Yeah, first, first person, not first. every person. All right, so we're back. And while we were gone, the ghost app like gave us several words. So it was I'm going just crazy. Gonna... Gave us names. What? How do I? Okay, close out of here. <sighs> All right, so so it said house, uh-huh. shameful, make, and then it gave us three names. Charles, Sandra, Greg, and then it just got random. It said ugly, shot, which I can confirm that he was not shot. <laughs> He could have taken a shot. 
could have taken a or shot. two or three or four. Um, it said console and then brimstone. So there was that. And then I forgot to mention, I just want to say this really quick, that one of the theories out there was that um, he was kept somewhere, like a freezer, preserved. The family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's, okay, that influential family that they yeah. were talking about, that yeah. they own a restaurant that has a freezer. And one of the theories out there is that he, he and one of the rumors that like is supposedly spread around the town is that he was kept in a freezer. Ooh, yeah, so that, that, that would, makes yeah that makes sense. Twenty seven days. I mean, he would have decomposed much, much more. Unless they were holding him somewhere and then killed him later and put him out. Yeah. So the fe- freezer, freezer, <laughs> the freezer theory makes sense makes sense and there was also a shed on the property um when the family went out and they never got to search the shed because of course they found his body Mm -hmm. right away but when they went back out there not too long afterwards the shed was completely gone what yeah shit there could have been evidence in there yeah so that was freezer in there yeah who knows so there were those things so Mm -hmm. i just thought I, i realized that i forgot to mention them Anyways, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. let's get on to your story. Insane. Yeah, it was. A, it's a good story. Uh-huh. I mean, I really hope that they find him, like to give his mom closure and his family and his. Yeah, I'm glad that at least they found him. Though. Yeah, well, at least they have that. Yeah. But being but told that he wasn't murdered and not really knowing what happened to him, that's yeah. just like. And then now that eats away that at he you. He was murdered, but yeah. now hearing that he was murdered, yeah. And now you have to live with, yes, I have him, but now they want justice, right? I mean, they wanted it anyway. They knew, yeah. they knew he was murdered, yeah. But now they actually have. There was also rumors that the friends were in on it, and they took him down there and they set him up. Which I don't, I think don't know. So. I don't think so either. I think they were just no. they were young and stupid. I don't think they did that. All right. Um, Oh, yeah, Daddy. (laughs) It's my turn. (laughs) Door open. (laughs) Back door closed. (laughs) And our Father, who art in heaven, (laughs) hallowed be thy name. Please protect us. From evil. Yeah. Oh that my God. I the word just evil just it. showed up. As that was being heard. Okay. I don't like that. You're going to be cleansing our space. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That was so early. And go. Go. My story is on Bovilla. Bovilla. Bovilla Island. You have, to, you have to say it with the hand. Bovilla Island. With your hand. With your hand. Ice. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh my god! That was amazing! That was so amazing! Thank you! Oh, I got chills big time! That was so awesome! It that just, was so awesome! The ghost app just said ice, oh and we were just god, talking about this. freezer. Do I ever get chills this, up, this Ooh, much in here? Child. What? Okay. Remember my story that I told you guys that I had that? Okay. Oh. Interesting. Sometimes I'm like, are we reading into this too much? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I was literally just crunched on ice, and then it said ice. Oh, well, and he, we were just talking about him being in a freezer. And we were talking about him being in a freezer. But that was a little too, like, I literally just chomped on ice. All right. Povelia. Povelia. Is a small island. It's actually beautiful. Did you, have you seen? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But anyway, it's a small island located between Venice, Venice? Mm -hmm. Why does that sound wrong? And Lido in the Venetian Lagoon in Northern Italy. Or as my dad will say, Italy. Italy. (laughs) I don't know how he says it. It Italy. He says it different. But actually the way he says it, I've heard Italian people say it that way. So maybe that's why he says it like that. Anyway, Italy. Italy. Um, now all I can do is keep looking at that thing. Okay, I'm going to point it towards you. A small canal divides the island into two separate parts. Anyway, here's the most incredible thing. It's um, the island first appears in the historical records in 421. Ooh, that's a long time ago. That's old. 420. Where were you in the year? 
421. <laughs> That's old. Right? And back then, it was like populated until it was populated. And it wasn't, I don't believe, a dark space right. in 421. But anyway, residents fled because of warfare in 1379. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, the island had remained uninhabited for centuries. And then in 1527, the Doge, wait, let's say, it's like Douche, but Doge. The Doge. This is my fun thing The now. douche? Yeah, the doge. doge? Doge. Doge. The Doge. <laughs> I like that. I love this thing. I just discovered it. Anyway, offered the island to, sometimes I could say this right, the camel, now see if I just don't focus on it. Camel, de, here, I got, I got this. Camel de Lees. Camel de Lees monks. Okay, so the, so. Immersion. Interesting. Anyway, even the Camel de Lis monks knew something wasn't right about this island. Because they were like, we don't want that stinking island. Thanks anyway. Peace out. Right. And if you know me at all, you would know that I would say that uh, that was spirit telling them, don't take that fucking island. It's uh, bad news. Right. I mean, if, if monks want to have nothing to do with you. <laughs> then you should probably... <laughs> Walk away. Walk away. Take Walk away, hint. Chucky. Walk away. Walk away. So from 1645 on, the Venetian government built five octagonal forts okay. to protect and control the entrances to the lagoon. Hmm. The Pavilia <laughs> octagon is one of four that still survive. That's a long time. Hmm. still survive yeah especially because there's been war and stuff there oh hell yeah especially after like the world wars yeah world war ii like everything got freaking pulverized i mean in 1776 the island came under the jurisdiction of i'm just gonna say it in our language public health office okay it's really wait let's see if we can here wait i got it wait wait <laughs> I'm sure I can do it like this. <laughs> oh, I am oh, I thought you were going to say it. No. Well, I am. Watch. Magistrato Alessani, though. Magistrato, Magistrato Alessanita. Sanita. Okay. Anyway, public health I office. believe you. No, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We heard the guy say it. Yeah. Um, anyway, public health office. Uh, what did I say? They took jurisdiction. And became, it became a checkpoint for all goods and people coming. You know, these fucking checkpoints are shady. You know, this is like the second story we've done with a checkpoint that was shady. Which one we did? Did you hear that? Was that the dog? That was the dog, right? That might have been the dog. Okay. But it was weird. That was a weird sound. The one that I did about... Wyatt? It was kind of, I think it was like a Western type story. It was the guy that had the the place. I already have to pee like a racehorse right now. It was the guy <laughs> that had, oh my God, it's so uncomfortable. He had the, um, above the kitchen where he kept, like he would steal from people and then keep it above the kitchen. The one room and the ladder. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I can't yeah, remember. It was uh, the down south. It, it was, yeah. I, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what right? you I can't but remember. That was it was a haunted like, house, but it was really old and it was like. Yeah, and it had been added, built on. Yeah. yeah. And that was started out like a checkpoint for goods. Anyway. And then uh, for goods. Okay, so it was the public health and it became a checkpoint for goods and people coming to and going from Venice by ship. Mm, those ships. This is the problem. And in 1793, there were several. Several, several cases of the plague on two ships. Wow. Just on two ships. And consequently, the island was transformed into a temporary confinement station for the ill. I guess they called that a lazarado. Mm-hmm. Uh, this role became permanent in 1805 under the rule of Napo Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, I thought you were going to say Napoleon Dynamite. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who also had... Napoleon. No, there was a church on this island, too, and he had... Um, it was the Church of San 
by Tally. Just he had it destroyed. The bell tower was converted to into a lighthouse, so there was a bell bell tower there. That bell tower is going to be significant later in my story. Okay. But anyway, it was turned into a lighthouse. The Lazarado was um, closed in 1814. All right, now, dun, 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 the bubonic plague, also known as Black Death. Right. That comes along, and it was just, so that was a completely devastating global epidemic, much like what we see here. Minus the big pus filled. Yeah, it had, yeah, I'll describe that in a minute. (laughs) Um, And it struck Europe, Asia, just a whole bunch of. Even in London, even now, um, I was watching uh, one of the paranormal teams do something one day when I was researching something else, and they were in a park in London, Mm -hmm. and they were like walking, they're like, there's so many graves from the plague Mm -hmm. that they just build over them. That's crazy. They don't even, I mean, a lot of places they actually have archaeologists there, Mm -hmm. but there's just so many because the plague was so crazy. Right. Ridiculous. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people are dead and buried everywhere. Anyway, okay, so it was, it struck Europe and Asia in the mid-1300s. The plague arrived in Europe in October 1347 when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. Interesting. Right? Anyway, and from Messina, you can see the island. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. When people gathered on the docks, they were met with, oh, this is the horrifying surprise. Right. Most sailors aboard the ships were dead, and those who were still alive were gravely ill. Okay. And covered with the black boils that oozed blood and pus. Okay. Not to mention, I'm sure it reeked to all get out. Had to stink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sicilian (laughs) authorities... I know, it was probably... Sicilian authorities hastily ordered the fleet of death ships, quote unquote, out of the harbor, but it was too late. Over the next five years, the Black Death would kill more than 20 million people in Europe. That's almost one third of the continent's population. That's so That's crazy. A lot. That is a lot of people. Anyway, the plug, the plug, the plug, <laughs> the plug, is thought to have originated in Asia. Okay, first of all, the whole time I was doing this, I kept thinking of all the stuff that people say today about the stuff that's going on today. The China virus? Yeah, that pisses me (laughs) off. I know, me too. (laughs) And then all the hate that's going on. Yeah. So I almost didn't even want to mention this, but it's part of the story. People are stupid. They are so ignorant. Ahead. Huh. Pendant. Ooh. Anyway, um, it originated in Asia. Oh, anyway, I'll just stick to my script. 2,000 years ago and was likely spread by sh- trading ships. Interesting. <laughs> my- <laughs> I mean, and of course, that makes sense. <laughs> right. Through recent research, it has been... Henry. Who's Henry? Row. Row? Row, row. You have to row to row, the row, island? Row, you do. <laughs> Like in the gondola? I don't know. Or in a row. <laughs> in a row? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, basically, um, Black Death may have existed in Europe in early 3000 BC. Really? Yeah, that's crazy, right? Crazy. So it made a resurgence? <laughs> or it's been around the, just since then? The bubonic plague attacks the lymph na- lymphatic system causing swelling of the lymph nodes this is what makes it so gross okay. if untreated the infection can spread into the blood or lungs symptoms are fever chills vomiting diarrhea terrible aches and pains and this sounds like a me- medicine commercial I know. <laughs> and it may cause death. may cause <laughs> um and then in short order as well as pus Filled boils uh, that cover their mm. body and seep black pus. Okay. <laughs> that I'm sure carries a potent odor. After suffering all that, the patient most likely then suffered death. Well, well black plague is not dead. 
People still get it. Really? Because it's transferred by um, rats? from ants. I mean, rats. Yeah, ants. If you get bit by an ant, you're going to get the plague. <laughs> um, but yeah, so people on Skid Row, most likely, uh-huh. end up getting it because of all the rats Yuck. in those places. But because we have antibiotics and... Better sanitation. Well, we just have antibiotics and medications right. that can fight it so people don't die from it now. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Amazing, right? Crazy. So crazy. Anyway, I mean, unfortunately, in the 1300s. How many, how many people died? Uh, we're going to get to that. Crazy. Apparently, we have another podcast host. <laughs> Oh, they're asking us questions. Um, I'll be getting to that in a minute. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands that I know. <laughs> okay, it wasn't until the plague hit Venice and even killed the Doge. What did I call him? Doge? Doge. Or Doge. Doge. The Doge. Giovanni. Finally. Finally. I know. What's vibrating? My phone. It ain't me. It ain't me. <laughs> Let's see how to say this guy's name. Listen carefully. Giovanni Mochinigo. Mochinigo. I don't think that's right. What? Giovanni? Yeah. Mochinigo. Mochinigo. Or Mocinigo. But I'm sure they say it Mochinigo. No? I'm, no. I'm just, because I'm what? thinking of like the, what do you call it, that tries to say my name and it never says it right. Oh, <laughs> this one's been pretty accurate. Me? Do we have a podcast guest? <laughs> Me? Yes. Hi, me. Hi. Do you want to say something? I was just going to chime in every once in a yeah. while. It's our ghost, ghost podcast so, host. Oh. Me. Well, I mean, hey, me. <laughs> it wasn't until the plague hit Venice and even killed the Doge Giovanni Mochinigo, whatever. Meat. Meat. Um, The head of state that the idea of the plague island came about. The Venetians wanted to isolate the effect of it infected and curb the spread so you know what why didn't italy do that this time i thought about that i wonder if they did because they put everybody on pavalia yeah (laughs) (laughs) so everybody italy italians they they that place is like the cursed island but they also i'm just gonna skip because something because this is probably at the end of my story but that island has come up for sale Mm -hmm. or rent or whatever and the people actually pulled money together to save it really yeah to preserve it oh even though none of them will go on it right and they are like no terrified of it cursed island but we don't want it to not exist yeah well um i guess the state was hoping or the country was hoping that somebody would an investor would buy it and then like build hotels on it right and then the people are like no we don't want that we just want it left alone so they want to daniel Daniel, are you our (laughs) co-host hi daniel um but i'll i'll get i might get into that i think i wrote something about it okay i don't know anyway there were actually other plagued islands in the lagoon lazarado vecchio Mm mm-hmm has been thoroughly explored and it's estimated around 500 people per day died i mean it's not big population so 500 per day that's That's a lot lot. archaeologists have studied the skeletons and remains they say they belong to men women and children so all died it's thought that around 160,000 people died on Povilla. Povilla. Wow. Um, but the island hasn't fully been investigated, like Lazarado Vecchio uh-huh. has. Being taken to the island was a sure death sentence. So here's what happened. When you were on a ship, and like say you were taking goods or whatever to Venice, mm-hmm. you had to be taken to the island for quarantine. That's where the name quarantine came from, was mm-hmm. from the Italians. So... You go to quarantine. Mm-hmm. The problem is you stay there for 40 days. If you're still alive after 40 <laughs> days. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's what quarantine is 40, whatever. Right. So if you're still alive after your 40 days, they, oh, I did write that right here. 
They still didn't. I'm just going to free free ball it. They still didn't let you off the island. Mm-hmm. You because then it was well. What if you got it from right. being on the island? So here you are, healthy. Right. You're quarantined. Right. You're healthy. They won't let you off. So you die there. What the fuck? So so nobody, yeah, it was so, a death sentence. Yeah, and so what I don't understand is if you are assigned to go take things to Venice, why? Are you doing it? <laughs> because you know you're going to have to be quarantined. Right. And then that's a death sentence. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. So I will go ahead and read what I wrote. But um, being taken to the island was a sure death sentence. And the people often went kicking and screaming, knowing that they would live out their last days in literal hell on earth. Some say that the soil is mostly made up of ash because that's all the dead burned victims. Right. And they actually show the soil. It it looks like ash. Some people who spent quarantine on the island thought after 40 days. Anyway, we just said this. Right. Though after 40 days, no symptoms, they were, they would be free to go about their business only to find once you were on the island, you never left. Literally never left. You didn't leave. And here's something else. And I don't know if I put this in here. So if I repeat it, okay. When they burned the dead bodies, Mm -hmm. if you were um not dead but pretty sick they just would burn you too alive what yeah yeah. wait yeah if you were not dead yeah but you you know but you were like pretty much on the verge of dying you're pretty sick you're gonna die anyway so they just Just tossed you on a pyre just throw you in there yeah i mean because it was piles and piles and piles and some people they just threw them on top of the dead bodies and then let them die there. Oh, God, It, that's it was horrid. disgusting. There was no humane anything. It wasn't like, you know how we do the They stories. just didn't want to deal with t- taking care of them anymore. They're like, you're already, you're, yeah. you're, you're a goner. Get on the pile. Right. You know how we do the stories of people that were getting like um, tuberculosis? Mm-hmm. In those hospitals, at least they were cared for. Mm-hmm. These people are not cared for. No, nope, no, nope, not one bit. That sounds atrocious. It's hell on earth. Yeah. Truly is. Ugh. Li- Living. Ah. During the 17th century, plague doctors started wearing... Okay, and then on top of it, you're sick. You've been stuck on this island. And then, like, imagine being kind of delusional. Mm-hmm. And then you open your eyes and you see this thing walking towards you. Oh, with the beak? The beak. Oh, my <laughs> and God. And the hat. Yes. And the robe and the dark... It's all dark. You think the devil himself is coming to take yeah. you to hell. And so, um, okay, so the 17th century plague doctors started wearing uniforms. I don't know why they couldn't think of something better, but in an effort to protect themselves from their patients, Charles, let's let's see how to say this guy's name. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Charles Delorme. Orm. Charles Delorme. I guess it's not that hard. <laughs> Okay, it just looks hard. Words are hard in general. They're hard when you've been drinking whiskey. <laughs> hey, I went second. That's water, people. Rasp. Um, okay, this guy came up with the concept of a long, dark robe worn with boots, gloves, and leggings. You know, they had the tight mm-hmm. pants and a hat. The hat, the black hat, was to identify them as the doctor mm-hmm. in 1619. The idea was to keep the physician's entire body covered. The outer layer of the co- layer of the costume was made of goat leather and often coated in wax. That was their PPE. Yes. <laughs> Underneath, the doctor wore a blouse that tied into his boots. They didn't let any of their skin show. The infamous plague masks were actually associated with air purity. Okay, so during the 17th and They 18th, were pretty freaky looking, that's for damn sure. They were scary, but they have a whole method to it. There was a purpose. There was. During the 17th and 18th century. Because, you know, even if you go to church, even now, they have the thing of like um, that they're burning the frankincense. Mm -hmm. But really, back in these times, frankincense was burned to mask all the body odor because people didn't shower every day. Right. Oh, well, that makes sense. You're welcome for that, everybody. (laughs) 
you know. And now I don't know why they burn it now. It's like ceremonial, but really, there was no ceremonial part to it. It was to mask the body odor. Not to, not even just to purify the air. Like, well, like pure. I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with okay. purifying the air, but, but mostly. That's the second time that name came up. That is. Wyatt. It's mostly because you're in these like small little churches and mm-hmm. they stink and it's hot and humid. So they would just do that and it would clean the air and you have to smell a bunch of B.O. <laughs> <laughs> John. Hmm. Interesting. The, okay. So the masks during the 17th and 18th century, the idea of the air could, that the air could be polluted became widespread and the doctors sought to prevent bad air Right. Or the, I don't know what, from getting, they didn't want the germs to get to them. Right. Basically. They didn't want to get sick. So. They didn't want your cooties. Right. Which, can't blame them. I mean, so, I don't want plague cooties. Ugh. So, the eyes were fitted with um, glass pieces. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so the doctors could see. All right. And then the long nose of the masks were filled with drugs and aromatic herbs, including... Mint, camphora, cloves, straw, laudanum, I don't know what that is, rose petals, and myrrh to filter filter the air. The herbs also helped with the smell. Yeah. I mean, imagine, imagine being on that island surrounded by people that are dying. Jenna? Yeah. The, the smell of death was probably everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Ugh. Considering that the dead bodies and lanced boils, no, it says buboes. Yeah, that's why it's called. <laughs> what is the bo- that? The buboes. It's those the boils. Those. Oh, I've never heard of that. Um, <laughs> the do- <laughs> y'all buboes. I know. What's a boobo? <laughs> The doctors dealt with were rather pungent, which we just said. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I did know this. That song, Ring Around the Rosies, Pocket uh, Full of Posies. That's about the plague. It sounds so innocent. It does. Oh, but this says, however, despite rumors, Ring Around the Rosie was not likely, was like most likely not about the plague. Oh, huh. really? I always heard it was. Ring Around the Rosies, Pocket Full of po- Ashes, Ashes, We All Burned burn down <laughs> why did i just say that i thought it was fall well, down fall down oh. i don't know why i, I thought you were reading that. it off of there no well i think i <laughs> what the hell it just said cremate what and, and i slipped and said burn down that is not normal and then that said cremate <laughs> okay we do have another guest host. All right. Medieval medicine was based around the idea that the human body had four humors that needed to be balanced. Blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and the black bile were to be, were to be balanced. Hi. Hi. Get down. You never do this to me. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Get out. All right. Out. <clears throat> were to be balanced with the help of diet, herbs, natural medicines. And if things got too far out of whack, blood would be... So that's where they would do the bloodletting, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. All right. In terms of plague treatments, doctors typically stuck with what they knew and tried to remove... I can't believe that said cremate. I know. Right when we were... That's crazy. Stuck with what they knew and tried to remove the toxic imbalance from the body by bloodletting their patients which is crazy because well, hold on they also lanced rub, uh, rubbed toads on oh what they rubbed toads on the on the bubos or leached the bubos and tried to remove the sickness that way and s- listen sex was prohibited too but that rarely stuck That's i mean it never sticks i mean <laughs> somebody's Who gotta listens? get it you're dying <clears throat> may as well get it <laughs> All right, the treatments got worse. And we're going over this because you got to hear how tortured this island is. So some patients would be told to drink their own urine. Huh. Pine box? Maybe. Pine? Um, they would be told to drink their own urine Ugh. or consume <laughs> medicines made from eggshells, marigolds. I was just about to swig this whiskey <laughs> when you said that. <laughs> Do it! Patients would also be rubbed with onion. Garlic, butter, arsenic. Oh, nice. Or flower petal compounds. Or even be advised to rub animal parts 
on their body to try to eliminate the illness. Frogs, snakes. What kind of animal parts? Frogs, snakes, and pigeons were particularly popular if they were nearby. Once bobos were lanced, they were often rubbed with a mixture. Oh, this is grossing me out. It's actually like that had to burn. It was mixed with tree sap, flower petals, and human excrement. Hmm. That's gross. Like that what? Sounds yummy. Like, like what kind of excrement? Human excrement. I Isn't mean, that what? what it said? But what is that? Shit. Oh, I was just thinking like anything that would ex- come no. from you. Shit. Oh, I'm so I'm so smart. <laughs> I'm all shit. I just thought that meant like anything that excretes anything out, that of comes your body. out of your body. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As a person neared death, they would they could even be coated in mercury. <gasps> okay. Wow. Nope. Gets worse. Coated in mercury and baked in an oven for a while. Wait. What? For a while? For a while. And then the, and then brought out. Wait. Um, yeah. Oh. Wait. You're basted in mercury, stuck in the oven. It gets worse. There were also techniques to And you're still alive? Yeah. And then induce diarrhea to try to drive out whatever evil had taken... Because, of course, we got to bring religion into this. It was the devil. So during the Middle Ages, the belief was that bad things happened because God was dissatisfied with humanity. Of course. Yeah. This meant that people needed to take to make amends. Hey, we have not come so far. No, we haven't. I mean, there's still people that believe this yes. bullshit. This meant that people... This is... Okay, don't even get me on that soapbox. This meant that people needed to make amends. As a result, self-flagellation... Mm-hmm. Duh. Yeah, right. ...became a common treatment for the plague. Individuals who could not whip themselves in order to atone for whatever sins they had about the disease. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, uh, what, Somebody oh, would do it for you? If, okay. Um, th- so that, yeah, somebody would do it for you because there were entire groups of flagellants dedicated to the practice. But when one person couldn't whip themselves sufficiently or <laughs> were already sick and too weak... They often asked a plague doctor to do it for them. Oh, my God. So, Ranker.com is where <sighs> I got a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you want, like, it goes into super major historical detail about all of this. It's pretty interesting. I, uh, If you want to hear more about it, go to Ranker.com. Anyway, after Pavilia was used to quarantine anyone exhibiting exhibiting symptoms of the plague napoleon used it to store weapons of course he did yeah because you know who's going to go on a plague filled island he uh, (laughs) will you he uh he also had the 12th century church destroyed and the church's bell tower was converted to a lighthouse hmm Eventually, Napoleon's enemies discovered he was storing weapons on the island, and many battles took place on it, claiming even more lives. So, more darkness on the island. In 1922... For such a tiny island, there's a lot of death. Right. A lot of busyness and a lot of death. In 1922, a mental hospital, which is still there... Oh, God. Yeah. A mental hospital was built on the island, where many of the patients claim to have seen ghosts. Well, and then they're in a different mental state, so of course. And they would say how, they would be like tortured by the screams of the souls who more, who roam unsettled this like all the souls from like the plague. Right. And it's funny because were they crazy? Yeah, exactly. Because were they? Were they? I mean, imagine what the criteria back the back then was well, remember to remember all you all you had to do is disobey your husband. Right. Exactly. Sad. <clears throat> the patients did not receive kind and loving care while living there. The doctor would perform. Okay, this doctor was so fucked up. Muse. Muse? Um, the doctor, he would perform um, lobotomies with a hand drill, mm-hmm. which we've, we've done some stories of them doing lobotomies on mm-hmm. people, like them being awake and doing right. it, you know, through the eyes and all that. Um, <sighs> but this doctor, he was fucking twisted the hand drills that he would use mm-hmm. you can still oh my God. they're still on the property to this day uh. like you can still find them in the building um it's also said that the patients would be taken to the bell tower to receive a special kind of demented torture mm-hmm. 
Uh, what that is, nobody knows. So what what was the time frame of the mental hospital? 1922. And then um, I'm getting to the doctor's death. Uh, okay. So, uh, the doctor eventually ended his life. At, at the very bell tower where he would torture people. Mm-hmm. Um, he they Okay, so they say he died by suicide, mm-hmm. claiming the patients drove him mad. <laughs> the patients drove him mad. Mm-hmm. The nurse, dead patients? <laughs> they come back to torture him? Maybe it was the plagued people. A nurse. They held back. Uh-huh. <laughs> a nurse... So he jumped off the bell tower, I guess. A nurse said, a nurse said to have witnessed the whole event, but it is unclear whether the doctor, in fact, killed himself or whether someone else threw him off the bell tower. You know what? I wouldn't rule that out. <laughs> no. Maybe she did it. <gasps> Whoa! A witch. <laughs> In 1968, after the doctor's death, so he died 1968 or before, Mm -hmm. the hospital was closed. So 1922 to 1968, um, the hospital was then closed and the island was once again completely abandoned. Interesting. So it is illegal to go on this island. You can be arrested if you go on the island. But... Paranormal crazies still will, um, you can pay like 200 euros to somebody, Mm -hmm. a local, and they will take you over there. They will not stay. They will drop your ass off and they will come back for you for 200 euros. That's to them. That's good money to make sure that they come back and get you. You're crazy enough and you're doing it your own free will. But I'm not staying. Right. But you can actually be arrested. So you're. Basically stranded until somebody comes to get you. Yes. And I'm probably jumping the gun here. But um, so I was watching some YouTubers, these two young guys, and they're exploring and they're hearing things and they're freaking each other out, whatever. And then at some point they're like, is that smoking? Is that thing on fire? And there was like this, it looked metal to me. And they're like, we got to put that out. Mm -hmm. and all they had were some their water bottles but they want to get the hell off the island now they are spooked out because how did that thing catch fire right why is it smoking and you can see it it's smoking and so they're spooked out but they're like we gotta at least put our water bottles on it Mm because we don't want to burn this place down right and then i believe they got but then after i saw that i then read that there were some people on the island that they were dropped off Mm -hmm. and exploring and you know you're not supposed to be there and something caught fire and they actually had to be rescued by the fire department. So for that to happen with the little YouTubers was kind of, I didn't know that story until. I mean, it seems I like a work. great place to drop off a dead body. Yeah. Well, there's lots of people sneak on there oh, and okay. explore. So, okay. So although it is actually illegal, there are some shows like Ghost, Ghost Adventures. Hunters. Ghost Adventures. Um, and Scariest Places on Earth. Uh actually did a show on it they had this oh my god they had this family on there and this poor girl i think she was like the youngest povalia island it is the most scary place on earth but um she cried during the whole thing i couldn't even watch it because she was just like screaming and crying the whole time so Mm -hmm. i was like this is annoying but it is a scary place, but anyway, like so it. Ghost Adventures actually got permission to go on the island and film there. And of course, it was like season two, episode three, but I think they went twice. But anyway, all right, I'll, I'll get I'll get to the Ghost Adventures thing. Let me just finish this. One thing visitors report experiencing is the sensation of being watched, which they all, whoa, burn, burn, which... Um, they all um, say that they all feel like they're being watched by somebody. Mm-hmm. Others report being scratched or pushed by invisible forces. Some entities have even been said to push visitors into walls. That was my computer. Into walls or chase them down the corridors. Chased? Chase. Ew. Chase them. Surge shock. Anyway, visitors report seeing shadows on the walls moving along with them as they explore the decaying facility. Mm -mm. 
Um, A handful of psychics who have been brought to the island claim that there is an energy that can only be described as malignant with the presence of the angry spirits lingering. There are so they're so deeply frightened psychics and paranormal experts that most of them refuse to ever return. With more than a hundred thousand plague victims. A hundred thousand. Which actually I um uh, they Zach on Ghost Adventures had an actual Italian tour guide mm-hmm. and he said it was hundreds of thousands, which I believe that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, victims and mental patients buried on the small island of Povilla. It is no surprise that human bones continue to wash up on the shores. Oh, yeah. Isn't that crazy? And hundreds of years later, that's amazing. Yeah. Like from the plague. Right. I mean, the mental institution, I could probably see that. But right. um, this fact alone is enough to creep out any potential visitors or buyers. Even fishermen steer clear of Pavilion's shallows for fear of picking up human bones in their nets yeah creepy uh when the mental hospital in pavilia was finally closed in 1968 the island was sold 1968 yeah oh wow it was sold to a private owner however he did not have it very long before selling it yet to another owner in both instances the the new owners could not bear to spend any time there the atmosphere was heavy and morbid of course strange sounds combined with all the hauntings sorry with all the hauntings that had been reported continued to prevail as a result the island was left completely abandoned it has come up for sale again i believe this is like 2014 or 13 Mm -hmm. was the last time i'm not sure but the deals continue to fall through maybe prospective owners have heard too many frightening tales advance i mean (laughs) years after pavilia uh, i always say that pavilia island um island's mental hospital was shut down a family decided to purchase the island intending to build a private holiday home there they arrived i would not uh, no i I would never build a holiday no i kind of thought it would be cool because it was only like um five hundred thousand dollars for the whole island And yeah. I'm like, it's like a fucking. That'd be amazing. I totally would buy it. You know, I would. You know, I would. It's a fire sale. <laughs> I'd so buy it. Anyway, um, they arrived and got settled up, uh, in on the first day, excited to begin their new adventure. But that was the first. That very first night was filled with such horrors. Oh my God! Yes, listen to this. <laughs> I act like it's my first time, but it, I, this just reminded me of it. Within hours, the family fled, never to return. They reported that their daughter's face was nearly ripped off by an angry resident entity. Are you serious? No. Ugh, that just so, gave I mean, me yes, freaking goosebumps serious. all the way up my yeah. back. I, I, I'm, <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh, eating alive. Maybe they were trying to eat her face. Oh. Amid, amid the n- numerous reports from illegal visitors, this uh, is the story of a curiosity thrill seeker who went to Pavilia. 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 <laughs> Pavilia. With a group of friends upon entering the abandoned uh, mental hospital, <laughs> the illegal tourist reported a heavy sense of dread descended around them followed by a deep voice that warned them leave immediately and do not return okay the visitors that's immediately comply- complied okay so then that's where can you imagine the energetic imprint that is on that island after everything that's occurred there I mean, you can make up some pretty crazy stories. We could. I don't think they have to. I truly believe that there is some shit on that island. Yeah. So I already told you about the smoke and the water bottles. All right. Um, So Ghost Adventures. While while filming. So you know... Our favorite guy. I know. Let me just tell you. First of all, I I highly recommend people go and listen to Baggins Bros (laughs) podcast because they are hilarious. Also, did I tell you about this one? This guy, he makes this so interesting. Hold on. Haunted Places. Oh, I've listened to that one. 
Yeah. Did you? He yeah, makes that's a good it, one. He makes it fun. Okay. That was one of the first, like, when I really started listening to podcasts. One of the first ones I started listening to. Yeah, he made it really exciting and fun, and he kind of acts out the. It's it's really cool. It's more of a story. It's a story. He's yeah. a storyteller. Yeah. Well, Ghost Adventures was filming. They were in the asylum. Oh, first, first, can I just stay? Stay. Can I first? say zach approaches the island with one of those masks on. zach baggins i'm what? just gonna say i felt the disrespect i'm like that's not cool you shouldn't do that right but whatever but you know he likes to provoke so he's so dramatic that's his thing. we're going in this island right now come we're and mess with hell. me bro yeah. <laughs> you want to pick on people hell is waiting for us okay what do i do with that oh Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, I shouldn't have said. Contain. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Whoa. All right. So they're filming in the asylum part of the text. What? My daughter? <laughs> She's going to text me again? She's going to be like, I can't find the fudge sickles. All right. So they're in the asylum part. And Aaron, I believe it was Aaron, is like, oh, I like it's like the wind got knocked out, or like all my energy is gone. And at that moment, you can see like an orb come mm. out of him, mm-hmm. and then what? Really? Yeah, yeah. And then Aaron be- begins to complain about being dizzy and feeling drained. At the same time, the EMF meter is kind of going off, and it's spiking. And, uh, and, and Nick, Nick is in this one and hit the cam the video camera. That's an old one. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old one. And the video camera is, um, getting blurry out of focus right. and stuff. So, and spirit does do that. Does it at my house all the time. Oh, and I believe their equipment was getting drained, which that also happens at my house because huh. there's so much energy. They will drain my stuff. Then shortly after that, Nick calls out an Italian for the spirits to use their energy and communicate with them. <laughs> then they're like, they can begin to hear like voices around them. And then, of course, this is where they lose me because I've seen this very same acting <laughs> The same exact thing he did in a newer episode. So Zach now gets possessed. And just for those of you, I just want you all to know, Zach gets possessed in almost every episode. (laughs) Spirit is not going to possess you this way. This does not happen. This just doesn't happen. Right. It's not normal. And what's really crazy is I think he's just an angry person. And this gives him a way to act out that anger and then say it was spirit. Right. Because sometimes like I'll fart and then I'll say spirit did it. (laughs) (laughs) So he can be a total douchebag and be like, it wasn't me, man. Yeah. It was spirit. They took over my body. Yeah. Like I think it's, I think he can have a temper. Yeah. Okay. So I tend to agree. He's possessed with something angry. Had I not seen him do this exact same, the exact, the shaking, the falling on the ground, the yelling at Aaron, the same exact thing, I I might have been like, eh, but no, I wouldn't have, but still. All right, let's just say Walter. Walter. Um, okay, so now Zach gets possessed and he's saying something angry and he begins to get ex- aggressive with poor Aaron and is shaking and gets ridiculous. But he calmly, hand, uh, he, he's calm enough to hand Nick the camera so it doesn't break the camera. Right. And then is still like, get away from me. <laughs> oh, here's my camera. It's I'm possessed. So <laughs> No, uh, okay, but but there were some legitimate things that happened, like like the orb coming from, and I do believe Aaron That's what I'm felt saying. Something. It's like they get so much like legitimate that the, he doesn't stuff. have to be dramatic. Yeah, it's, he runs like, it. it. Yeah, for he, me, he does. Yeah, he runs it for me too, because like that took away from the fact that Aaron really did. What I think is he gets he is a camera hog, an attention hog. Or and he gets jealous because so, Aaron does get yeah and so something happened to Aaron so he now has to be possessed right because it always happens like that yeah 
Anyway, in another scene, the guys were outside. Okay, so Zach has this giant machete, and he's, like, chopping down these vines or vegetation. And, um, I mean, out there was where thousands of bodies have been burned, so the, the ground is really soft. And Aaron and Zach, are, they're both like, do you smell that? Like, it smells like something's burning. Then Zach yells out, Hello, is anyone here? And you can hear on their video a loud sound that sounds like someone screaming. Yeah. Then, while Nick is filming... (laughs) You're, like, obsessed with me today. While Nick is filming, he's on this bridge, and Zach begins to call out spirit in Italian, and you can hear as if someone is, like, running on the bridge towards Nick. I don't think they made that up. I think that's true. Because Nick gets kind of freaked out. Right? Yeah, he does. (laughs) Yeah. And then um, while Zach was alone, Zach was alone outside in the building, he records the sound of footsteps and the sound of a man moaning. (laughs) He's like, this is a scary story, honey. Are you so scared? Are you so scared? Okay, while Zach was alone inside the building, he records the sound of footsteps and then uh, of a man moaning. You hear, like that. What? Yeah. And then he's in the pitch black with only an infrared camera while Aaron was in the bell tower. Okay, so he's in that dark room and he hears the moan and the... All right, I'm almost done. Okay, so Aaron is in the bell tower and he's trying to get the attention of the doctor. He was calling out Prestizio or something like that. Presto. Anyway, whatever the doctor's (laughs) name is. (laughs) Um, He then... Aaron sneezes. He's like, hachoo. And it sounds like then something like falls or gets thrown right after he sneezed. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, he like legit gets scared. Mm -hmm. And so I I believe it. So after that, a knocking sound was made. Okay, so that's that. Then he called out to the doctor again. And you can hear a male male voice yell out like it's responding to him. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, oh, you can see these clips on, if you just pull up, I have it on here. Anyway, you can see them on the uh, Travel Channel. Now, Aaron hears the, the knocking, the male voice yells out. He then is startled once again by another loud sound that comes from, like, not even near him. Mm-hmm. So, he's, like, getting out of there. Anyway, I summed it up and said, for me, I believe the Coast Adventures caught credible activity, because... I think they did. Mm -hmm. I think they run it with Zach's drama because he can't handle being... I honestly think that Aaron is sensitive. I do too. I believe that too. I even kind of believe Nick is too to a point, but I do believe Aaron is. Right. And and if you watch, go and watch all these. You will see. Anytime somebody else is experiencing something, Zach jumps in and has a possession. Yeah. (laughs) I guarantee... You watch it. I, and then you guys, you guys Facebook me and tell me, Carlene, you're right. All right. But I have to say, I do, I do believe the island is host to more than just the plague. I have to say that was some good writing. All right. I'm done. Yeah. What'd you think? It's that I, I definitely wouldn't want to spend the night. I, I was getting legitimately creeped out while I was doing this story. And yeah. I don't, I don't ever get creeped out doing these things. Yeah. But. That one creeped me out. Okay, so just can I make sure I get credit? Ranker and I got a I got teeny tiny bit from Wikipedia and I think that's it. And then of course Ghost Adventures. All right, mine was before I forget because I cut mine out of the last one. Uh-huh. Wikipedia, Daily Mail, Rolling Stone, and of course Reddit. I love Rolling Stone. Get some good info. Yeah. I didn't even know that until I did my last story last time. Last story, last time. <laughs> Those are good. Oh, Those are good. good. We're we at good. We're, we're at two and a half on. hours again. Well, but, we got some dog stuff to cut out. Yeah. At least there was no dog farting. Nope. We made it with no dog farts. I should knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, my poor kids are probably wondering. You, you oh, said you were going to make it short, Mom. I know. Wait, what is that? Oh. That that was a ghost text. Allison Lude something. That's something you don't pull up. Yeah, and don't click on the link. No. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to wrap it up. <gasps> that thing did say text. It did said it said text and then it said re- <gasps> read. Oh, 
It said read right after. I swear. No. Yes, it did. Oh. It was like it was backwards. Oh, it's my Yoda. God. Text read. Yeah, it did say. Yeah, it says text. Contain text read. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I get a weird text. So weird. So That is crazy. so weird. So weird. Like, All just right. saying. Well, That's those it. are good. Thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> If you want to go check out our um, merch, our merch. And I also did put a little silly video up on our Patreon. Perfect. If you want to go check that out. Perfect. All right. All right, guys. That's it. I'm Mama. I'm Carly. Have a good night. Night.